It flies like a plane, floats like a boat, and drives like a comedy drunk after the office Christmas party. Could this fantastically versatile vehicle ever be the future of personal transport? <laughs> I'm going to get around these legs if it kills me. London, 2050, and you're trying to get across town. Sadly, all the bendy buses have blown themselves up, and the congestion charge has been raised to a thousand pounds a day. My advice to you is, take a detour along the Thames. But how? Fortunately, there's a transport revolution happening, and it comes in the form of one of these. This is a new generation of personal hovercraft. Making it has meant shrinking conventional hovercraft design and making it simple enough for even a novice like me to learn to drive in a couple of minutes. So, how do they do it? The hovercraft has been around over 50 years and, able to cross almost any terrain, it's one of the most versatile vehicles ever created. But will it ever do for the school run? Well, this little fella is one of a new generation of low-cost, lightweight hovercraft aimed at ordinary punters like you and me. Very good, my man. There you go. Keep the change. Ah. Ah. To find out how they're made, I've come to the Hovpod factory here in Southampton. The hovercraft has never really taken off as a means of private personal transport. The trouble is, it's too damned heavy. A whacking great fan to lift it off the ground, and another whacking great fan to make it move. But Peter Land plumped for a design which got round this problem. Hello there, Pete. Very Hi, good Rob. to meet you. Thanks for letting me have a look around. Really impressive setup you've got here. Brilliant. I would love to see how you come up with the designs. Have you got the, the kind of early designs you did? We, we're going to show you some CAD drawings of the, some of the models. Oh, brilliant. All right, let's have a look come at those. Yeah. The first part of Pete's engineering solution to the heavy hovercraft problem was surprisingly simple ditch one of the fans. But you've obviously got the big fan at the back right. which is pushing air out of the back so you've got to get the air into there. Um, it's more the under hull air uh, right. path which is important. On this hovercraft the fan at the back does two jobs. It propels the vehicle along but it also lifts it up. This is done via a small funnel located towards the bottom of the fan which diverts some of the thrust down into the body of the craft and then through a series of holes into the skirts below. We'll show you some of the cross-section. And that's the cross-section, right, and that's which makes it really clear that you can now see, because the air is yeah, blown through down. this bit, and yeah. then, then it blows down into the skirts there. That makes a lot of sense, actually, because that's a bit of a mystery when you see it. Thanks very much. I was going to have a snoop around the factory, if that's all right. Is yeah, that, go on. Okay? Yeah. I, won't, I won't break anything, I promise. <laughs> <Yeah>. OK. <laughs> So the air is funneled at force into the body of the craft and then shoots down through these holes with sufficient force to lift the thing up. So this is where the air gets blown through all these holes? Through all these holes, right. all the way around the edge. Right. And there's the, uh, Now, which is the front and the back? Because they're Fronts. different sizes. Front back. and back. Different sized holes ensure that when the air feeds in from the back, it creates an even pressure all the way round so the craft doesn't flip over. But ditching one of the fans meant less power, which meant they needed to create a super light body. For this, they used high-impact polyethylene, which is a kind of polythene. It acts a bit like my mum's custard, nice and spongy and light on the inside, with an unappetizing crust on the outside. But how tough is it? Despite my promise not to break anything, I take a hammer in hand. This is the same stuff they use for Formula One crash barriers, bulletproof vests and artificial joints. And I can see why. Amazing. Lovely. Not even left them. There's no mark there. No. Nope. So it's really solid stuff, isn't it? It has to be very solid. It <laughs> needs to be pretty tough. <laughs> the fan's lightweight blades are made of rigid nylon. The air pressure they create inflates a skirt, which is made of another kind of reinforced nylon called hyperlon. And the whole thing is powered by a lightweight Rotax engine, the same kind as used on microlight aircraft. The finished vehicle weighs just 250 kilos, but when it's running, its downforce is practically zero. So if you run over someone's toes, they shouldn't feel a thing. 
They say it's possible to learn to drive one of these things in just 10 minutes. So join us in a bit while I'll be attempting to pilot one through our very own Hover Challenge obstacle course. Right, this is the moment of truth. Pete here has rather foolishly agreed to allow me to have a bash at driving his HovPod mini hovercraft. In theory, if all goes well, uh, in about 10 minutes I should be confident enough to pop down to the local supermarket for the weekly shop. Now it's just as well it's got rubber skirts around it. Should handle a bit like a bumper car. Hello there, Pete. So oh, now I've got... I don't, I just don't know what to do with this thing. I don't know how you do this. This looks a bit challenging. Well, if you want to step in, so I'll talk you through the right. basics of it. So I sit, sit here? Yeah, sit there, yep. So you've already got your hand on the throttle right, right. and your hand's on the steering. Right. So all you have to do is turn that like that. That will turn the rudders at the back. Right. You've got a fan behind you. Right. And when you turn the throttle, that will make you go forward and lift the craft right. up. And then what about stopping? Because I notice there's no brakes. Well, stopping, you just let the power go, yeah, nice yeah. and gently, or you can spin the craft round, use a little bit of power just to set it back down. Right, that's, cause that's quite good to know. I like to know how to stop. <laughs> it's very reassuring. A bit of throttle, and I feel myself rise up from the ground and slowly head off, like James Bond on something knocked up by Q in his spare time. The controls could hardly be simpler, and the suspension, as you can imagine, is unbeatable. It's a bit like driving a bouncy castle. But the hov pod does not handle like your average family saloon. Oh. And once you get used to it, you don't want to get off. <laughs> well, other than that rather bumpy landing, do you think I've got the confidence now to, to have yep. a go on my own? Yep. Right. All right. So, to put it to the test, I'm going to attempt to pick up some eggs from a replica of my local village high street. To get them, I'm going to have to negotiate my way past an escaped shop mannequin, Mrs. Goggins' pram, Mr. Venus de Milo, and a set of traffic lights. Yes, it's a regular day in Toy Town. Oh, and to add to the fun, I've been challenged to do it in 60 seconds. Right through the middle. It's a grass in the eye. I can't see where I'm going. Normally, the skirt on one of these things lasts a couple of years. But fortunately, if I do cause any damage, they won't have to replace the whole lot because it's made of 65 separate sections. Just as well because with less than 30 seconds left, as I speed round the armless pedestrian for a moment, I lose it completely. I'll never get round the legs. <laughs> I'm going to get round these legs if it kills me. That's the home straight, not too fast. Whoa! Well, I can't see myself doing the weekly shopping run or picking the kids up from school in one of these just yet, but when it comes to having fun, the HovPod definitely gets my vote.